Our uh, presenter is coming to us from the United States, at, and that's Lynn Fung, uh, who's an experienced English as a second language teacher, ESL, researcher, publisher, author, and creator. Uh, by the way, I apologize that my um, avatar is speaking instead of me right now, uh, but I'll, I'll be back, or she'll be back. As the founder of Eduling International, and um, you'll hear more about that, hopefully. Uh, she recently released an app called Eduling Speak. Um, and it's not so recent anymore, is it, Lynn? It's been one year, yeah. A year, so congratulations. <laughs> Thank uh, you. It's probably been a very busy year for you. I get all the notifications, so I'm up to date with all the new things that are happening in Eduling Speak, and I hope others will also uh, join today. So get your phones ready. Um, so that they're nearby. Um, so Edulink Speak uh, connects learners from any location in the world to talk in pairs during the performance of tasks on the app, but not only pairs, right? But you'll talk about yes. that. Mm -hmm. He's also the author of a picture book for ages zero. How do you start? Well, I guess that's what, when they're in the womb, right? They're still um, <laughs> not <Yeah>. born, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> which not is one. a great idea. Mm -hmm. Great idea. And, and I, I also did it. We talked to our babies before they're born, right? Zero to six titled Tug of Words. Her publications and research have been focused on task engagement, international student experience, gamification and language teaching and other SLA topics. And it's really exciting uh, for me to have you with us, Lynn, and everyone um, join in the chat, ask questions, um, get to know one another. Thank you. Thank you so much, Nelly. I actually like your avatar, and I was going to ask how you create it and present with it. Um, it's it's exciting, actually. So thank you so much, everyone, for being here. Uh, I know it's, it's a Sunday, and uh, <clears throat> um, you're busy with many activities. So I um, let me see, we have a few speakers here and I tend to be pretty interactive in my presentation. <clears throat> Last year when I presented on this, I think I got um, people to do tasks with me, but this year I think mostly I'm gonna present some theoretical background, uh, share about my app a little bit, but I wanna focus on um, the application of the materials that I created in a recent course that I just finished uh, at my university. So let me start by just reviewing a little bit. I actually love uh, um, looking at things from, from a broad perspective before zooming in. So in terms of apps and language learning, this is related to mobile assisted language learning and perhaps you are already familiar with many language learning apps. Um, and maybe you can put in the chat what apps you, you uh, are familiar with for language learning. Uh, but here I am showing you some of the most popular apps uh, perhaps you have heard of Duolingo and someone has mentioned to me that whenever we think of language learning, we think of Duolingo. Uh, so the, obviously it is uh, pretty dominant, but you can also see other apps like Babbel, Wabuzu, uh, Memrise and Tandem. These are some major players in terms of app-based language learning. And um, I don't know how accurate this is, but this the sources is the business of apps that 6.18 billion in spending in 2022 on app-based language learning. So people do return to mobile devices to learn a foreign language. Now, uh, the potential of um, mobile assisted language learning, and perhaps you are all uh, familiar with this, that um, mobile la assisted language learning can link the local and the global. So students learn in the local environment where they are while being connected to global networks. Um, there's a linking of episodic and the extended in terms of really bite-sized lessons, right? They have uh, these apps tend to offer bite-sized lessons, but the knowledge can be cumulative and extended over time. Uh, there's a linking of the personal and the social. So again, when you are with your phone, 
uh, it seems like it's really personal. It is really um, isolated in a way because you are on your personal devices. While you may uh, be engaged uh, with learning communities through social media and different networks here. And uh, obviously you can see the mobility of the devices, the learners and the learning experience. Learners can learn anywhere, anytime. Now, moving on, you may agree with uh, other benefits as well. Apps can be quite flexible, customized, and learners can learn at their own pace. And this is perhaps a really appealing point to learners. Uh, it can improve students' engagement through gamification and other design elements. Uh, it can promote other uh, learner autonomy through self-regulated learning strategies. Uh, you can see that apps these days integrate reminders and learning plans, uh, and that may help with self-regulated -re learning as well. Um, however, the issue is that if you look at a lot of apps, uh, there's the tendency to teach vocabulary in, in isolation. And my guess is that it's just vocabulary is easier to teach on an app. So these are some of the common um, when we look at teaching vocabulary, these are some common characteristics among apps here. Vocabulary in isolation. Uh, there's some vocabulary in context. In, the, in context, here maybe the, uh, there are sentences with new vocabulary. Um, there's some focus on grammatical form, but you can also see the domination of vocabulary here um, as well. So common task types, or actually these are not tasks, activities or exercises, uh, matching images and words, flashcards, clothes, right? fill in the planks. These are actually pretty easy to create and you can see that the limit, the context is limited um, in, in the form of sentences, not full reading passages. Moving on as well, uh, another issue is limited corrective feedback. Uh, so usually there's some kind of visual feedback. If the learners get something wrong, there may be some uh, color or some sound to notify them that something, uh, their, their, um, their answer is wrong. So it's mostly it's right or wrong. There, there is some feedback with some textual explanations, but this is when I think apps cannot replace teachers. Now, um, also, it is really common to see that uh, there's limited user interaction uh, on the app as well. Mostly it's computer to device or human to device interaction. So kind of li um, very li limited user interaction here. And usually no oral interaction. You start to see apps with some recording features, but usually um, there hasn't been enough focus on the speaking skills. So I want to also um, give you an overview of some analysis of gamification in successful language apps, because this is such a dominant feature of apps and app-based language learning here. And um, this review focuses on uh, Jobs, Duolingo, Hello Chinese, Memrise, and Modbury. So these are also common apps here. Um, they do incorporate game elements and give priority to intrinsic motivation. So intrinsic motivation in this here in the sense of uh, creating enjoyment and fun during the language learning process. Um, these apps also include motiv motivating factors like their goals and challenges, progress indicators, feedback and reward uh, content unlocking that can be motivating, freedom of choice. They can choose different routes um, to, to study. They can freedom to fail. They can fail many times and do the activity again and again. So um, with these apps, when, um, when learners were surveyed to give reasons for their persistence with the apps they cite useful for learning interesting and for specific necessities for example if they uh, have to travel to another country they may pick up one of these apps so specific necessities for them uh, and also here some learners or a lot of users also reported giving up and usually the reasons for giving up include inefficacy or inefficiency, poor quality, 
Um, so they feel like for for so after a while, they feel like maybe the progress is not really um, enough. There's no time, unattractive, no perseverance and motivation. So this is more like internal, internal uh, but it's actually difficult to stick with something for a long time. Price and no necessity. After the necessity goes away, then they stop using the app. Um, so. Uh, it, again, here also user perception. Here, some of the factors are really important for their engagement and motivation. Here, in terms of moderately difficult goals, clear concrete challenges and missions, useful learning tasks with increasing complexity, personalization according to individual experience, various elements of games, visible progress indicators, cooperation, and show, social invo involvement. So if you're interested in designing an app, you know, perhaps these uh, criteria or these, these factors are really important for um, user engagement here. In the case of Duolingo, uh, here I also have a review for you. Um, the case of Duol Duolingo has I mean, this research focuses on Duolingo because there's a strong representation of gamification in uh, mobile assisted language learning. When people think of streaks or points or, or levels, unlocking content, they may think of Duolingo. Um, and also the research overall, when they review different research studies, they find a positive correlation between the use of Duolingo and performance. But this, these results are debatable because, again, it depends on what performance, how performance is measured. And mostly, it, this is to mostly focus on vocabulary, right? Uh, and not enough measurement of other skills. There's a high level of satisfaction and enjoyment. So, this is also a positive, a positive perception of the interactive and gamified nature. And this is something that Duolingo keeps. Um, improving and doing a lot more to engage learners. Chunked presentation of information. So this is the bite-sized lessons. Flexibility of use, uh, you cannot debate that. Ease of access and gamification elements. So these are all of the positive perception um, of Duolingo. However, there have been critiques also that um, the, the, the tasks uh, at some point become rep repetitive and boring, right? questionable real life language use. If you have used Duolingo, you can see that sometimes you question, why am I learning this? <laughs> Behaviorist approach. So we have been talking about communicative language teaching, or we have been talking about um, task-based language teaching, but Duolingo, mostly it's still a lot of repetition, grammar translation. Uh, so there has been a critique uh, regarding that as well. Learning tools focused on rote learning, translation, competition, and extrinsic rewards. So this is something I find really interesting. That on the one hand, these apps focus on focus on intrinsic motivation. Right? Intrinsic motivation is you yourself find learning enjoyable. Um, it is an, a part of you. It is uh, competence enhancing. However, the way they uh, improve. Intrinsic motivation is through extrinsic rewards, all the points and the badges and all those things, those things are extrinsic rewards. So um, that is Duolingo, but if you have um, explored different apps, you may notice uh, the different apps that focus on connecting learners as well for communication. And I have a few here. Um, when I came to the US, actually, I, I, I um, wanted to look for conversation partners, kind of chatting partners. So I joined my language exchange uh, and I found quite a few people to chat with. So I don't know. I think that the, the website is still operating, but I'm not sure. Recently, I heard a lot about Hello Talk, and I did try it. And many of my students actually are trying it. So uh, these apps, uh, you can see that build in the gaps in terms of communication. Now, for my app, <laughs> I am in Pittsburgh, and Duolingo is also based in Pittsburgh. And for some reason, when when I introduce myself and when I talk about the app, you 
people mistake uh, me with Duolingo or they question that my app looks uh, a lot like Duolingo and I'm not sure about that because um, I the purpose and the targets are totally different. So I created this kind of blog post about um, uh, uh, the comparison between my app Duolingo Speak and, I'm uh, sorry, Agilink Speak and Duolingo. And I will point out some differences here. Uh, so uh, I, I'm not sure whether it is pool by association. It's good that, that maybe people associate it, it with Duolingo or it's better when I can distinct, uh, distinguish uh, myself. Uh, I mentioned at the beginning that when I talked to a colleague, he also mentioned that for better or worse, or maybe for worse here, people, Duolingo is synonymous to language learning. So it's really difficult to uh, be recognized uh, beyond, um, to compete with them and be recognized. So some of the special features of my app, again, it is uh, like Nelly mentioned, it's an app to connect learners to talk in pairs, but the difference here is to is during task performance, right? So it is not a free conversation. When I talk to my students about Hello Talk and they said that the main goal of going to Hello Talk is to talk to people, to learn slang, but my app is more about language learning and they say that the activities are more for learning. Um, and it is totally pedagogically driven. When I thought of this, I was just thinking about learning and how to drive language development. Um, there are uh, also input-based and communicative tasks, right? Um, so learners, when they use the app, they can also play in solo mode to complete input-based tasks as well. The texts on the app are meaningful. So I always try to contextualize whatever language um, that is integrated in these texts. Uh, again, it connects learners to talk in pairs during tasks. It also allows learners to complete tasks individually. There are gamification elements, and, and I'm not sure whether this is why people think that it resembles Duolingo, because again, there's some uh, gamification elements, which I think are very common these days, uh, like streaks and points and levels and badges and all those features. Okay, so here this is just the kind of logistics of how to use the app. Uh, learners can complete tasks in pairs by uh, joining the live lounge or they can pin the profile in the connection lounge so that they can make friends with others. Um, they can also, um, if they want to play tasks individually, they can click on play in solo mode. So if you happen to have it on your phone or if you're interested in downloading it right now, um, you can follow along if you're interested. So um, currently it has more than 900 tasks in 20 different categories. I do believe that technology and new tasks have the novelty effect, right? Novelty is really something, is something that attracts learners uh, to try something new but then that novelty may wear off. So I feel that I have to keep creating different types of tasks and categories here. And that's why I have a lot here. It is gamified, as I already mentioned. It also includes an educator dashboard. So if I have um, some time at the end of this presentation, I will show you the educator dashboard on the website. Um, here, connection opportunities, there are a few here, but I have to admit that sometimes if you wanna connect randomly with other learners, um, it, it's still difficult to do so, but they can call and text friends. Uh, they can talk to volunteers. If they join a class managed by you, they can communicate with classmates on the app. So these are some examples of the tasks. Um, they are, some of them are a little bit childish, but I'm moving toward a, an older population of 13 years and older. Um, I still keep some of these tasks and I develop more that are more, um, uh, that target teenagers and adults. But for example, they can find differences between two pictures. They can sequence pictures into the correct um, order, but they need to work in pairs to do this. Um, Crossword, I have many crossword puzzles on the app, but they also need to sol solve them in pairs. And when I tried these with my students, they, they, enjoyed, they enjoyed them a lot. 
some open conversation topics. These are very accessible. Um, students can just open a conversation topic and there are questions for them. Some of the questions are really fun. Some uh, questions resemble table topics, also pretty fun. Uh, Input-based and recording tasks, they can also record on the app. Maybe I forgot uh, 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 to put a new feature here. After they record um, anything, even in, in pairs or individually, they can also transcribe it. They can request AI to correct their speech uh, and request vocabulary analysis as well. And this is, I think, is a huge feature of the app in the sense that they record and they get feedback in a more extended way, not only uh, right or wrong, but they can look at their whole transcript and they can compare with the AI corrected version. Some gamification elements, I already um, mentioned this, but I wanna show some pictures here. There's a leaderboard, points, ranking level, badges, immediate feedback also, choice, which is important uh, element and interactive and collaborative. So again, I mentioned that this is pedagogically driven. So whatever new features I add on the app, I always ask, how is this going to drive language development? So if you're familiar with task-based language teaching, we drive language development through um, engaging students in the performance of tasks. So the tasks themselves are what drive language development because through performing tasks, they negotiate meaning um, they use their language resources, and then by usage, they restructure the language that they have. I do have pre-test vocabulary introduction. Uh, when learners are stuck, I have hints. I also have language-focused post-test review activities. This is, again, a way to drive development apart from the feedback that I just already mentioned. So feedback and progress, task completion itself is feedback, and there's some corrective feedback directly on the app, correct or incorrect. There are engagement metrics, there are recordings and transcript and AI correction. And because I have an educator dashboard, teachers can also provide extra feedback to students. Okay. Let's see what time is it. I have been talking for a long time. This is the educator dashboard. Um, it is web-based, but it is connected to the app. So basically you create an educator account on the app. And then when you go to the dashboard, you log in with your account and you can create classes. You can add students. You can make announcements. You can assign tasks. You can look at the transcripts when they submit their tasks. You can look at, at the AI correction that they already generated. And then you can give extra feedback. And that is what I used over my summer in my class. And I will show it to you um, in a minute. OK, so maybe I, I'll stop here to see if you have questions at this point. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't look at the chat. <laughs> oh, oh. Um, let me see. Let me take a look at your chat. I thought that there's no, OK. No what questions, but I have a question, Lynn. Um, yes. I created an account, as you know, um, a long time. I don't know when, but a while back. And I yeah. don't recall whether there was an educator, whether we could choose, I mean, whether I chose or not. How do you go back? Or okay. so because you can it just ask me for my level. And I thought, okay. you know, it's strange. Why is it asking me for my level at this time? Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, educator can can choose the highest level, right? Like uh, in terms of proficiency. So it does ask you for your proficiency level, just because we want to pair learners, and they um, have um, they can look at other people's profile to decide to connect with that person or not, or um, to. Uh, make friends with them or not, but it's true. Um, I think this month I, I am going to focus on customize the um, how the app shows up for different accounts. Um, so there are different account types, learner, educator, uh, parent, and both. Oh, I see. I have it. I have it. I, I yeah. Did, I, yeah, I just found an educator account. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Okay, so let me look through. I apologize, I didn't look at the the uh, chat. 
creative writing and book on sociolinguistics. Okay, so you're chatting, that's good. Learning German on Duolingo, he liked it. <laughs> yeah, after a while, maybe, I think Duolingo is improving also because I see that they put in more stories and longer texts. So maybe when you reach a higher level, then you um, have more interesting materials. But Duolingo has a bit of strength. Uh, I, I see a hand raised, but uh, I can finish this comment that um, it's very accessible, right? Um, because it targets beginners. So anyone can pick it up and learn. And my app doesn't really target beginner, but that is both a strength and a weakness. A weakness. It targets higher level learners. So Tijana, do you have a question? Yes, uh, first of all, thank you. It was really interesting uh, uh, presentation. And actually, while you were presenting uh, the features, I actually installed it on my mobile phone to try it out. And one mm -hmm. thing that actually I would like in particular to about your um, uh, tool to ask uh, is that I saw in the, in the slides that you presented IELTS uh, possibility to, to practice IELTS. At yes. least uh, I have some candidates which are preparing uh, for the, their master's programs and they need to be at very high level. But mm -hmm. when I opened the uh, when I opened the um, uh, application here, I have learner up to the age of 60, something like 16 plus, but I'm not, uh, I go for learner. Is that right? So I have yeah, options, I... learner, parent, educator, volunteer. So I should choose learner. Is that right? If I want to you, come you... to the content. Yeah, you can choose educator because educator also has um, the same access to learners, but they have the mm -hmm. ability to create a, a class on my dashboard. So um, I suggest mm -hmm. you choose educator, but later on you can create another learner account um, because when you add students to your class, sometimes you want to try it out the student's experience. But for now, if you want to set it up, I suggest just use educator. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Because mm -hmm. I usually try out the content I plan to give to my students. I simply go through the whole material. I know the same. It's not the same perspective as uh, somebody who is the, mm, at a lower level of English than me, for example. But still, I want to go through all the stages to see what are possible difficult points, etc. So yeah. thank you for up to you but yes you can create multiple accounts um and and let's see what else i do have a lot of ielts materials and later on i will mm -hmm. show you also because um over the summer i actually used a lot of ielts materials uh on the app to teach my academic communication class and i have a plan to create packages or you can do it yourself and i'll show you you can create a course package with different ielts materials on the dashboard um, so thank you. I will give very specific suggestions uh, when I uh, open, uh, I show you the dashboard. Nelly, you have a question? Thank yeah, you. I was wondering, uh, it says upgrade, but it doesn't tell you what, I mean, what will I get if I upgrade? Maybe that's yeah. something that should um, be added. So for, for, for educator. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Um, Lynn, I think um, Lynn will answer in a second. I think sh there's a problem there. But everybody can unmute themselves, by the way, and ask questions. Um, and if you go into the educator account, you can also add things. Um, did you see that, Tiana? Yes, I'm uh, doing it right away. <laughs> while we are yeah exactly that's what i was thinking and waiting for lynn to come back until she comes back what it does do it oh, kind of throws me oh there's my uh, okay let's come back here why oh there i am now i'm a real person uh only my internet is somehow slow today so uh whatever i do yours I and to... and lynn's apparently <laughs> Sunday morning. Uh, it's actually, I think the company I have the account with something, they have been doing something, I suppose, extended the network or whatever. So it's been a little bit unreliable. Normally it's really fast and, and constant, but last, uh, I don't know, a couple of weeks, it's kind of irritating that 
uh, whatever I do. The other day I was using something, inter working on internet, and I think every half an hour there was some interruption. And it's probably the heat, written. you know. It needs to. You need to be in a cool room because it heats up in the summer. Uh, my air conditioning is working all the time, but it didn't help very much. No, that's what I'm saying. May, you, you may need to kind of turn it off from time to time, let it rest. Uh, it behaves differently Maybe. Uh, when, it's, when it's hot. Uh, or, I was doing the voice cold. typing. On, sorry to interrupt. Sorry. Go ahead. I was doing voice typing on uh, Google Docs because I had terrible long translation to finish in terribly short amount of time and uh, there was uh, I actually relied on Intel but it didn't work that efficiently Ma eventually I managed but I don't know it's, tell me when Lynn comes back because she's going to lose her um, well she could speak actually because everybody has uh, Eduardo uh, try it now um, Eduling mm. I will uh, try to more uh, in more detail later on because uh, okay, let's try to. I hate when I have to fill all these uh, things on a mobile phone because it takes tremendous amount of time. So I prefer. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. You know, for young learners, um, it might be difficult. Um, which maybe I'll ask Lynn when she comes back. Um, why do they have to create accounts? Or maybe they don't. I wasn't sure about that. I always go back to those uh, things that I can do uh, auto refill and something like that. And I hate when I come to the moment password because they tend exactly. to have one password for everything. <laughs> it's easier for, to remember and everybody criticizes me that it's very unsafe to do. Yeah, of course. No, but I mean, for, for young learners, it, not even for just young learners, for I think in general, people um, don't like to, if you know, to create accounts and they don't remember their uh, authentication. If they're using Gmail, they, they forget they're, they need to. It sometimes requires you to add your password and they don't want to do that or they don't remember it. So um, I, I think, yes, I'm back. But I cannot yes. turn on my video yet. No, I need to. Yeah, I need to give you rights. That's why I was uh, saying. Sorry, my computer. You were, no, no, no. <laughs> you will let. That's not my. It's, you don't have to be sorry. That's Zoom. <laughs> you know, it should it should give you back your rights. Yeah. Right? No, I mean my computer uh, decided to restart, oh. so I. Oh, I see. Yeah, uh, I just changed to this computer uh, this week, so it's it's still. Okay, so if you, uh, I will continue, and if you have more questions, uh, I think I'm, I'm about we, to finish. We, came up, uh, we discussed it while you were not here, so okay. we'll be able to ask you. Can you make this larger, the, the presentation? Okay, let me see. I, yes, let me see where is, where am I now? I, I slideshow, talking. it's under slideshow, even though I don't use Microsoft. Okay, so I will, I will show you how I just implemented um the uh, the materials that i have into a course so i just finished teaching a course called academic communication last over the last few summers um um you see i actually used a course on coursera called the science of well-being when i taught my students how to listen to lectures and how to understand research and then um, later on how to do research. Let me see if I can turn my video on yet. Okay. So over the past few years, I used that course on Coursera, but then um, this summer I felt that my students level is a little bit lower or was a little bit lower than um, the previous years. And also every time that I use the material I have to log into Coursera and I have to kind of start all over again as a student. So this year, because I created so many materials myself, I decided to continue to create the materials for the course. So uh, with the goal of developing students listening and speaking skills uh, and especially academic communication, I decided to focus on 
um, three main uh, objectives here for students to be able to tell stories and sh or give short speeches, um, for them to engage in academic discussion, and at the end for them to give an academic presentation. So I decided to use um, the two minute speeches common in the IELTS exam as model models for the first unit. So, uh, and then also because I just published this book, um, IELTS Speaking Part Two, uh, if you're familiar with the IELTS exam, you may be familiar with part two of the exam, which is scary to many students because they have to talk for two minutes continuously. Uh, and there are a lot of um, topics and a lot of uh, different types of, of, kind of, of text that they have to produce in a way. <clears throat> so um, I recently published this book. It's available on Amazon, but basically to give you a secret, this is the materials mostly are drawn from the app. Uh, in the app, I have 60, oh, oh, I think 62 minute speeches with many tasks that accompany those speeches. So I pulled them out and uh, I, made, I made a collection with um, other authors here. And we also wrote more strategies and explanation and suggestions on the book. So I have this book with 25 model speeches in the book and a lot of different strategies and activities there. And I decided to use it to teach students how to give uh, short speeches uh, in terms of describing a place, describing a person, uh, telling a story in the past, describe an activity, and then other types of short speeches as well. I Personally, I also found these two-minute speeches really useful because over the years, I have been asked so many times to give short speeches, right? So when I have to make a business pitch, usually it's two minutes. Um, when I, if you go on a job interview, the suggestion is not to talk for more than two minutes when you answer a question. Recently, I was involved with APEC, the uh, Asia Pacific uh, Economic uh, Cooperation. They visited Pittsburgh. So after I met with them, they asked me to give uh, them a 60 second uh, video. So I recorded it as well. So short speeches and telling stories are actually very common and very useful. So I decided to focus on that and I use uh, the book as well as the app and I'll, I'll show it to you. And with academic discussion, um, 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 I also, because I have so many IELTS materials, I decided to use the part three of the IELTS um, uh, interview. Uh, to guide students through academic discussion, but I added a lot. Teaching in the classroom is different from teaching uh, or students learning from an app in that you have to make the activities interesting. You always have to supplement a lot. So for example, in terms of academic discussion, our, our first topic is the environment. So we went to an event to attend a workshop on microgreens and then also recycling. And then we talked a lot about that. So my point is that in a classroom, you need to do more than just using ready-made materials. And then with academic presentation, um, I guided uh, students through a process of doing a research project on foreign language enjoyment and foreign language anxiety. And later on, if the students agree, I can show you their presentation in their paper also. So let me talk a little bit more with that course. I use the book, but I also use the Agiling Educator dashboard um, uh, on, uh, on the web. And then um, I assign the different tasks on the app for them to talk either in class or at home or record. Um, so those are the resources that I, I used for this 10-week uh, course. Um, and then with academic discussion, I already talked a little bit uh, already, but I uh, apart from the uh, IELTS part three that I have on the app, I also have a series of what is called tiny lessons on the app, including um, something about the, uh, um, the environment, creativity. And then I created more text and more materials uh, with the four, five topics here, motivation, foreign language learning, engagement in foreign language learning, uh, foreign language, uh, foreign language enjoyment, foreign language anxiety, foreign language aptitude. So I use these texts because they are academic, but I write them in a way that is accessible to students. There's the, there are a lot of 
um, the information is actually research based. Uh, I, I wrote these texts myself and then we studied the transcripts. We learned vocabulary from the transcripts. We learned about research um, and that's what I, um, I used. But if you are interested, um, you can access these uh, through the lessons. However, it's, it's a premium feature. So uh, if you're interested, just contact me and I'll, I'll give you access. So um, let me show you the educator dashboard here because that is the main uh, way how I manage this course. So um, I'm gonna educator.edulink.org. Uh, if you have a, an educator account, you can also do that. Um, so, okay. I need to, um, sorry, I will, because my computer just stopped. I haven't logged into my Gmail because, um, and so give me a second. If you have questions, please uh, put it in the chat. And, oh, I already logged, signed out, it's signed out. I have to sign back in to my Gmail because I use Gmail to log in to my actualing account. These days, that's the easiest way to create uh, an account on any app. They call it a one-stop sign-in or something. You use your own Apple account or um, G uh, Gmail to log into the different apps here. And because you do that, the app doesn't have to verify your email anymore. Otherwise, it has to. Lynn, but I'm going to answer uh, Tiana, who asked, said that for teachers sometimes, or for her, the phone is too small. You can have it online, and you can also have it on your desktop. Tiana. Oh, the dashboard, yes, the dashboard is on the desktop. Um, so uh, yes, I, I agree the phone. Um, my app is now on the iPad also. So if you're interested in using the um, using tablet, uh, the app can be accessible through a tablet, but the dashboard is web-based. So you can use on whatever devices. Um, so here, this is the course that I created. Oh, what is this? Okay, okay. Um, so this is the dashboard. It is pretty similar to Google Classroom, but it's simpler because uh, when I envisioned this, it was not the main feature. The, the main thing is the app, but for teachers, of course, I, I am continuing to improve this for teachers to manage their class. So um, this is when you wanna create a course, you can just click create class here. Um, and then you, um, you have this access, you have the news, so you can post any announcements here and you can encourage students to also communicate with each other. Um, the members of the class will show up here and the assignments will show up here. So for this course, um, I give students a lot of tasks, actually like 40 something tasks, but a task can be really simple. Let me see what I, I already forgot. Oh, this is just a trial. So for example, here, I asked them to submit a recording uh, of a speech and then ask AI to transcribe and correct their grammar. Um, and to create a task, you click create here. And let's just say, because you're interested in IELTS, so I have the IELTS part one solo. Solo means they can do it on their own and it's not anything too huge here. I have a series of questions that they have to answer. So you can preview on the app, it looks different. This is the dashboard. So it's just for teachers to preview. So you can see that these are the questions that they have to answer and record. Uh, but on the app, there's a little bit gamification in the presentation is different. So if you decide to select it, you can select it and then you can assign to all students in your class. Um, and then you can uh, title the test. I tend to just number it. So test 47, I, I have a lot already. So, and then you can set the due date. And then you can, set, this is the time of the due date. And then you can give some instruction to students here and students will see it on their app. Actually, if you wanna do something, I suggest you always have to try it as a learner yet. So you can add yourself to this course to see what students see. 
Um, so that's how you create an assignment. And um, let me see, let me show you more here. Uh, I have the different categories here. So IELTS one, two, three, um, IELTS topic one, two, three, these are the ones they have to talk in pairs. I think later on, I have to rename these categories. Um, IELTS two minute speeches here actually are the 62 minute speeches uh, for the IELTS that I mentioned, but I have so many other types of tasks. I have the, all these tiny lessons that you can assign uh, crossword. Um, I have a crossword based on the academic word list. So you may have to spend a lot of time exploring the app before you decide maybe what to use for your class. Um, let me show you something here. When a learner submit an assignment, then this is what you see. And this is, I just recorded this randomly because actually learner is, is me. So I sometimes I do the things with the students, but this is just random. So I wanted to try out the AI correct function. And so I recorded my, um, I recorded it here and I'll share the sample. It's nothing interesting anyway, but um, you can listen to the students recording. Are clothes important to you? Yes, clothes are important to me because they tell other people about who am I? I actually intentionally made some mistakes to see if the AI could correct it. And um, here, maybe as teachers, you can follow along and you can already see some mistakes. And it's so much easier than having to take notes, right? You may still take notes, but now if you want to give students extra feedback, it's easier here. Um, here, there's a grammar mistake here in terms of what order. So AI did correct it for me. So about who I am, not who am I. Uh, what else here? Later on, if I can highlight the mistakes, that would be also better. It depends on the situation of comfortable clothes. When I went to work, right, I'm talking about the present, but then suddenly I use the past tense here, so the AI does correct it for me. Um, so this is, I think of this function is, is helpful for students if they are motivated to learn and they do pay attention to their language after they read this. And then I do have the vocabulary analysis here. It will give students kind of a, a, an estimate of the words that are at the low, uh, low high frequency, mid frequency, and low frequency as well. Um, so they have a sense of uh, whether the vocabulary is complex or, or rich enough. And if you wanna give extra feedback, you type your comment here and then the students will see it on the app. Okay. Okay, so let me see if I have any more questions here. I have a question. Could there be a, a problem on the desktop? Because on the on the phone, I'm a teacher, an educator. On the desktop, I'm not. And I'm using the same email, so I'll contact you. Maybe you can, okay, uh, your tech I people can help with that. Yes, yes, definitely. Um, I have been using this myself for a long time, and sometimes I do notice problems, but usually I, I was able to navigate. I think one of the biggest maybe hurdle or obstacle to really um, having the app adopted is still somewhat it's uh, it's difficult to use. I, I don't know, maybe, maybe uh, and we still need to improve user experience. So I do notice that the sign up process is a little bit long, so we're going to simplify it this month. Uh, it's long just because we need to ask a lot of information for the app to work. Uh, so from a, a user's perspective, you may be annoyed in everything, but legally, we need to know the age. Um, if you want to use the translation service on the app, not service or function on the app, you need to um, put in your first language. And then uh, if you want um, and some other features as well. So that's why we need to ask for a lot of information there, but we are at least uh, going to direct learners so that it's one step at a time. Um, okay, so um, let me see. So that's the dashboard, and my plan is, I'm going back to home. 
I'm working with teachers. Uh, I'm, I'm working with teachers from different countries to see whether we can package the IELTS, for example, tasks into, into a course like this so that learners, when they sign up, if they want to work independently, they can do that, but they can also have supplemental teachers' feedback. So, for example, here, week one, I can assign seven tasks for them to do on their own, and then they can record for part one, part two, part three of the IELTS exam, or they can um, listen to a tiny, tiny lesson about it. And that is what my plan to implement the, the um, app for them. So I want to conclude here because I know maybe my time is almost up. Is that right, Nelly? Yes. <laughs> so the lesson learned here is that there are challenges and successes with the integration. It means with my own experience of using my own materials and my own uh, app. Um, instructing students always is, is an issue. Motivating students is still an issue, even though it's part of a class. We still need, I still need to give time uh, for the students to do it um, uh, in class. So I mentioned Duolingo because people feel like it dominates everything, but to me, there's still room for innovation. Um, and mobile learning can fulfill its potential further, right? There are a lot of potential and there are a lot of benefits, but it needs to be to do more. Apps have to provide conditions for second language development. It cannot just be repetition. Uh, translation is not enough. Um, the value of a technological innovation depends on how teachers and learners make use of it. Um, so the next phase is going to be a more difficult phase in terms of how to implement and create good experience for both teachers and, and students. I have this uh, short video here. Maybe it will boost up your mood because it's quite like. Yesterday, I just talked to a Russian instructor. He, uh, for some reason, he liked uh, the conversation with me so much. He said that you are one of the most interesting person I've ever met just because you're so passionate about this and you're so into the work and you don't even talk about the business or, or expect money back or anything that he wanted to work with me further. So we are talking about collaborating in terms of uh, Russian, but we need to explore uh, the possibility and how we can get users to uh, to practice Russian. Right. So, so if you have questions, if you want to try it out, just reach out to me. Um, I'm finding ways to make this work uh, for teachers, and that's what matters. Not my ideas or the materials in the app itself. So, thank you so much. For, thank, uh, you. thank you. Thank you so much, Lynn. Uh, I also share the information in the chat. And, um, and I agree that uh, if we want to make this really, really wonderful, we need to collaborate. So the fact yeah. that you're reaching out is uh, very heartwarming and it will work. It, it will work. So thank you, everyone. We've got six minutes until the next session. So uh, thank you. And we can continue, of course, Lynn, the conversation on Moodle, where I've enrolled you already. I'll, I'll share the link if you need it later on. Uh, so join and you can start a discussion on this. Uh, remember that uh, people will be coming in and watching these videos uh, for months, you know, until next year. So um, it's important to add.